Good morning. Welcome to St. Charles. We especially welcome those who are visiting this weekend and thank you for worshiping with us today. The Knights of Columbus are selling sauce and meatballs after mass. Please support their project. Let us offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift of the vast array of our universe and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and greet those near us as we prepare to celebrate our liturgy. Please join in singing our ancient hymn number 180 in Breaking Bread, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. With My brothers and sisters, as we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge those times when we have sinned. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. I'd like to invite our children to come forward for the children's liturgy of the word. Good morning. Y'all have a good week? Yeah? All right. You ready? Yeah? All right. Well, we will send you forth to hear God's word proclaimed, and we're going to wait for you all to come back so that together we can celebrate the Eucharist. I'm going to take this and lead us out. Okay, there you go. Good morning, good morning. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Taurus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the readings for this fifth Sunday of Easter introduce us to someone that we don't hear very much about. But he has a lot to say to us, especially now. I'm talking about St. Barnabas. The reading from Acts describes how 
he took Paul under his wing, in part to protect him from the frightened and suspicious Christians, but also to act as his mentor and guide. So let us step back a moment. Just who was Barnabas? And why should we care about him? History tells us that he was born into a wealthy Jewish family. At some point, he sold his estate and became a follower of Jesus. Later, after Paul arrived on the scene, it was Barnabas who introduced him to Peter. Some scholars think Barnabas and Paul had known each other when they were younger and had studied together under the same rabbi. For several years, Barnabas and Paul worked together as missionaries. Barnabas was reportedly a prolific evangelizer, and some scholars believe he is the writer behind the letter to the Hebrews, the only epistle not attributed to a particular author. Paul and Barnabas eventually had a falling out over Barnabas's cousin, Mark, the same Mark who wrote the gospel bearing his name, because Paul had doubts about Mark's dedication to the faith. But by one account, when Barnabas was finally martyred around the year 61, it was Paul who helped to bury him. Despite any differences they may have had, Christian love prevailed. Interestingly, Barnabas was not his given name. Just as Saul became Paul, Joseph was known as Barnabas after he became a Christian. The name Barnabas means son of encouragement. And encouragement is exactly what he gave to the growing Christian community, and undoubtedly to Paul as well. Today, Barnabas is the patron saint of Cyprus where he grew up, but as a result of the way he introduced Paul to the Christians and managed to foster mutual respect, when there was suspicion and mistrust, Barnabas is also the patron saint of peacemakers. Can anyone deny that we need his intercession today? In the passage from John's Gospel, Jesus exhorts us to remain in him like branches of a vine and to bear good fruit. And this Sunday's second reading, also from John, makes the message even more explicit. Love one another just as he commanded us. In too many places today, that command is forgotten or abandoned or even mocked. Our world is scarred by lands that are now synonymous with conflict and bloodshed. Places like Ukraine, Gaza, Haiti, Ethiopia. Add these to the battles being waged in other places too, in our families, in marriages, in politics. The landmines are everywhere. So is division and pain, the polarization and contempt. Survey the landscape and you realize that we live in a world hungry for peacemakers. 
but they are far too few. We need sons and daughters of encouragement. We need to pray for more Barnabases to rise up and remind us what too many have forgotten, our fundamental call as Christians. We are a faith founded on love. Christ is the vine. We are his branches. We are fed by the fruits of his redeeming love, love that was poured out on Calvary and which we celebrate now. During this Easter season, because it is a love that conquered death, a love that conquered hate, let this be our prayer that in the hopeful glow of Easter, we may live out the promise of the resurrection and become witnesses to the risen Christ by being in every way instruments of peace, encouragers of hope. More than ever, each of us needs to be a Barnabas to the world. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring before our God our prayers and our needs. For the church, may we bear fruit when we speak out boldly in the name of Jesus, as we love one another as he commanded us to do. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in public office, may they work together like interconnected branches on a vine, for the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in hunger and poverty, especially children and babies, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may we work together as a community of faith to, beat, to bear fruit that for the benefit of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of the Holy Spirit in St. Charles and St. Luke parishes as we work together to build a stronger community of faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, may we become compassionate and sensitive towards victims as Jesus would be, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Adam Hogan, who is being baptized this weekend, may he become a child of God 
and be reborn of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Daniel J. O'Horo, in whose memory our sanctuary lamp is lit for this week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joseph Terry, Father Marion Babiak, John and Jean Zura, John Jacobs Sr., Daniel J. O'Hora, Rose and Dan Marinelli, Angelina and Mike Greco, J. Philip Dean, Kathleen Vanetti, Theodore and Terry Degada, John Prusak, Mary and Martin Rinko, Marianne Welzak, Barbara Cassana, Emily and Raymond Hughes, Rory Filon, and Florina Creatora, who are remembered on our altar memorial list this month, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lisa Timms, whom we remember in this Mass, and for Magdalene Kirchbaum, who was buried this week, may all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold within our hearts. we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, our true find, without you we wither and fall. Cultivate your life within us so that we may be joyfully united with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. While the gifts are being prepared, Please join in singing number 432 and Breaking Bread, How Great Thou Art.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he bought, brought the sacrifices of the old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, of sa the altar and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During communion, please join in singing number 585 in Breaking Bread, We Are Many Parts.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Don't forget to support the Knights of Columbus if you haven't after Mass. They're selling their pasta sauce and meatballs. They do so much to help the local community, and the proceeds from the, uh, the sale they do uh, help those, uh, those uh, different... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Those different uh, groups that they help to sponsor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Closing hymn, number 739, in Breaking Bread, Lead Me, Lord. <laughs> 